Good evening and thanks so much for staying with Africa News and Network First Fast Live. My name is Cindy Mabi. This is our top story at this half hour. Police Minister Figile Mbalula says former Finance Minister Trevor Manuel is denying the existence of white monopoly capital because his annual household earnings are over 100 million rand. This is in response to Manuel saying the notion of white monopoly capital is misguided. Manuel says white monopoly capital doesn't exist except for what was created by the British PR agency that is linked to the Gupta family. However, Mbalula says Emmanuel's comment on the Guptas is just a deflection from the real debate about who really owns the economy. The NEC member further adds that Emmanuel cannot see the existence of white monopoly capital because he's captured by the system. Meanwhile, the dispute raises questions about the ANC top brass not sharing the same vision on economic transformation. The public spat raises the following questions. Firstly, do ANC leaders speak with one voice on white monopoly capital? And is the Mbalula manual spat a reflection of internal ANC differences? Does the public spat deflect the debate from real transformation issues? And here's how Mbalula responded to Manuel's attacks. He said, Manuel said, white monopoly capital is not part of the terms used in the ANC policy since the 1994 conference. But Mbalula says the ANC in 2002 identified colonialism perpetrated by a capitalistic class as white monopoly capital. Manuel says that WMC is a, a ruse to draw attention away from our pressing policy uh, priorities. However, Mbalula says the ANC economy being owned and controlled by white male Afrikaners is a reality. Manuel says WMC draws attention to one issue to ignore the realities confronting us. But Mbalula says tackling white monopoly capital, land is essential to reforming the economy in South Africa. And joining us in studio is Fiso Matlango, resident political analyst, Walter Lukuleni, a PAC secretary for publicity, and Musiri Tziane is with the South African Liberty Foundation. Gentlemen, again, good evening to you, and thanks so much for joining us. Walter, I mean, how much more longer are we going to be splitting hairs and trying to define what, what mon mon monopoly capital is, primarily when it comes to uh, the top leaders in the ANC? Evening, Cindy, and evening to your viewers. I think the reality of the matter is that uh, it is a smokescreen to continue to argue this fact. The reality is that uh, in this country, white monopoly capital exists. It is not something that we have to debate. What we have to debate is how we dismantle the control of white supremacy over the economy of the country. And that starts from the issue of the land, land reform. We have not uh, tackled the land reform. You will see service de delivery protests because people are landless, are land hungry, and it comes from that, from that premise. And to me, it is a, a, a deflection from the real issues. The issue here is how do we change the narrative in this country, how do we change the trajectory so that the African masses actually benefit from the economy of the country. Yeah, but I mean, if, if you still have the constitution and, and that has those draconian laws that essentially protect white privilege, it's very, for any incumbent government going forward, it's going to be very tricky for them to affect the, the ideals and aspirations of the majority black. Well, it's not going to be easy to, to, to end white monopoly capital, not by any extent of the imagination. Um, one can believe that when the constitution was drafted, or even within the, the Cordesa uh, negotiations, the ANC was outmaneuvered. The, many of them had just come back from, from exile. Um, they were talking to people who owned everything. And it was just those negotiations or nothing, or this country faces civil war. So uh, there was the, they were definitely outmaneuvered within the COSATU negotiations. So the constitution may not necessarily reflect the needs of black people in this country, particularly in this uh, current uh, dispensation. But it was either that or a war a stricken South Africa. I don't mean to be the one who educates Mr. Trevor Manuel, but uh, the term white monopoly capital has existed in the SACP books from as far as 1993, from as far as uh, 1986. This has been talks of white monopoly capital. And if anybody can speak today and say white monopoly capital doesn't exist, the people who own money and land in this country are definitely not black. So what do you mean when you say white monopoly capital doesn't exist? Because those people are 
not white and they don't own anything. Mm -hmm. So one can uh, assume to deal with the jargon whether it exists or not. But I think Mr. Manuel is very aware that white monopoly capital does exist. He's very much aware that black people in this country are the majority. But in fact, then indeed, they're still the group that lacks more. But I think when you're conflicted and when you have shares and uh, when you were in the Codessa Dialogues and you, you know, you're represented in many organizations in this country, particularly as a chairman, as a board member, as an advisor, as a director, um, you know, one can deny their existence of white capital. And what uh, Mr. Figilem Balula is saying, uh, you are exactly that which we call white monopoly capital because you're a beneficiary of the system. I think my last remarks would be to Mr. Trevor Manu, don't take up Figil Mbalula on Twitter, but uh, if uh, you want to write open <laughs> letters, then let it come in the public domain. Diss each other, I don't think one should fight their son. Mr. Figil Mbalula is a child of the ANC. It looks very untidy to me when altercations happen between Mr. Figil Mbalula and Mr. Trevor Manu. But if you want to discuss white monopoly capital, I think we all need a glass of water and sit down because it indeed exists and mm. we all know that. I, I, and I, I'm glad for, for that uh, analogy and uh, clarifying that it's not about a corner shop or a small franchise that is owned by a white person that is the issue. We encourage competition and for, for greater opportunities uh, for people to take advantage of. It's the cartels. It's those that have been uh, sponsored and even for endorsed. For 40 years and plus. For 40 years who've in, enjoyed uh, perennial contracts that are renewable, mm. uh, you know, the, the change of every century or what have you. So, so Walter, in, in taking the debate further, you know, um, we criticize to say we, the channel is divisive, that you, you always talk about racial things and politics. Can't we just uh, sing Kumbaya and move along? Why is it important for us to still have to identify the skewed economy and why there, there, there needs to be reform? Cindy, the, the, the creation of what is called South Africa took over 400 years. In actual fact, that creation was solely created to exclude the majority African people. That reality cannot be uh, uh, wished away in 23 years, especially when you have a constitution that is not suited for the, for the conditions of the country. Because that constitution is a, is a good constitution in a country where there was no racial inequality. It would work. But it's not working here because the reality is that White monopoly is existing. White supremacy is existing. The, your small corner shops are actually also victims of the same white monopoly capital. You know, when, when, when uh, uh, Van der Merwe has a shop at the corner and there's a mall coming in and your shop right comes in, it, it goes, goes out of business. Like Mr. Villarazzi goes out of, of business. So he's also a victim. So the reality is that what we need to, to, to be looking at is not arguing whether it exists or not. It's, it's coming out on how we can dismantle it. Trevor Manuel is the guy who actually allowed these companies to go and list outside the country, to take the money out of this country. So I understand he sings for his, for his, for his bread. He has to do it. There's no other way. But it's, it's, it's exactly what we've been saying for... For, for, for the existence of the PAC, we've been saying that those who have been captured by white leadership will always not want to create anything that would benefit the African masses. Mm. And, and I think mm. what also regresses uh, the whole process of trying to find balance uh, in uh, society is, is the difference of uh, opinion within the ANC itself. Mm -hmm. Executive Mayor of you know, in, in his opportunity to speak and, and get on the bandwagon saying that the Guptas need to allow the ANC to govern. There's all, that kind of narrative that almost wants to dilute the, the necessity to speak about a uh, economically balanced and fair mm -hmm. society. What, what, what's your view? Well, I think if anybody wants to speak in this day, someone would want to speak against the Gupta family because it gives you a sort of, you know, credence uh, in the party, particularly with those who are uh, anti-Zuma. And so you want to use the Gupta name to, to find a faction or to possess yourself for, for upcoming elections. But the one thing that uh, uh, not just ministers, but politicians and politicians who, who, who governed in days gone by, 
must be careful of is that they don't taint the image they have in this country. When you, you say these things to someone like Figile Mbalula and you have a, a, a social media fight or a fight in open letters, it, it, re it really looks untidy. This is a man who should now be kissing babies and giving lectures and declaring mm. what the ANC had done wrong and where, what the ANC can perhaps amend uh, looking forward. Trying to rule from the grave is very da dangerous. But uh, fighting the current leadership seems to destabilize the party because all the former leaders are now saying, well, this is what is wrong with this leadership and because of white, white monopoly capital doesn't exist. This is when Mr. Figile Mbalula says, but you did not correct it in your time. So you can't come now looking for relevance and publicity and to have your day in the sun once more. Come and tell us what is wrong with our administration when you let white monopoly capital run the Mandela administration. And I think it gets very tainted. Um, if he still considers himself to be a leader, let him give public lectures and, 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 uh, you know, and, and lead and enjoy his shares with grace. But if you want to come back and uh, you know, become scrupulous and manipulative, uh, directing what is wrong with this administration and try to, to, to bring people down, you'll find that uh, the answers that come your way are not nice at all. People in glass houses should not play with stones. Uh, it's a reality that we know. Uh, people should, uh, you know, should, should adhere. If you have led and you are now out of uh, public politics, they should appreciate that. Assist the ones that are in leadership, but do not attempt to throw stones because I think if uh, any person in the ANC goes down, he takes uh, the ANC and all others with it. Mm. Let's get to uh, Mosiri Tiana. Thanks so much for your patience. Uh, he's the uh, chair of the South African Liberty Foundation. Thanks, uh, Mosiri. How does the, these public spat deviate or deflect from the real issues uh, of uh, dealing with unemployment, inequality, etc.? Well, well uh, thank you, Cindy. I think what it does is it shows that it, at one particular stage, indeed, our, um, our treasury was never in good hands. I mean, if, if anyone who has ever headed that, 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 that department was, was ever in charge of our treasury, I wonder why we have so much policies that even today are excluding a large number of the black people and black business out of, out of participation in that. But it shows you that, that, you know, black people still have a lot of battles to fight. Particularly after when the, the, there was this radical economic transformation announced by the president, you had all along this negative reaction. There is this resistance. And what it does, it shows you who's who in the best, who's, who's who that serves the best interest of South Africans. It can show you that there are those who would want the status quo to remain, that you have people who can stand up and say, no, no, no. All of you must know in South Africa that there, is, there are no particular white people who are in charge of the economy of South Africa. When the economy of South Africa was taken over by the Dutch Eastern Indian Company when it landed here, from that day one up until now, the economy of South Africa has been on those minority whites. Now you stand up and say, no, 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 the white people are not in charge of this economy. There is no control of this economy. In actual fact, all of us are equal. What kind of a thinking is that? What reality are you living in? Are you really a South African? Where, how much trust did we give in such a man to lead our treasury? Mm -hmm. I wonder why today a, a huge number of black people are not participating in, 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 in businesses within, within even the SOEs. I wonder why there was so much a battle that has to be fought about people who have captured the ESCOM for more than 40 years. It means he was never willing to change the status quo. He was never willing to change the SAA. These are the treasury that we had in our time. Thank goodness we have a new minister who seems to be willing and who's talking, who, who understands that there's a need to change this economy from those white minority and order to have it all over, dispersed within the South Africans themselves. Mm. Mr. Reed, please stay on the line. Just uh, going back on weakening the white monopoly capital by using other narratives or sh side shows, um, just takes us back to why there hasn't been uh, a meaningful second transition in dealing with the issues of uh, exclusion. Uh, Walter, and especially when leaders 
two elephants fight, you know, the grass, the grass will, will be the casualty. How, how do we realize it? And especially to make our viewers more comfortable to say, Aluta continua, but it will be Uhuru at some point for black folks. Look, Cindy, the reality is that if, if we continue in this narrative of understanding or claiming that the ANC has the best intention or the best narrative, therefore we are looking at individuals within the ANC, this one is bad, this one is good. It's a problem. It's a wrong narrative. The reality is that in 1994, they sold out. They agreed to, to a deal that did not include the African people. All that it did was to take away the reality of the bullet getting to the white suburbs. And what has happened is that the, the outcomes of what has, they've delivered in the 23 years is clearly not for the African people. It has not benefited the African people. And the only way that we can change that is to take away all that was wrong, which includes the constitution, because this constitution is not for the African people, it does not deal with the fundamental problems. The fundamental problem is that we are landless, we are land hungry, we cannot continue to live that way, and it's business as usual. This argument that is happening here is a clear deflection from the realities. The, the people who are receiving what is called RTP houses are receiving smaller houses, not because the government of the ANC doesn't want to give them more. It's because they don't have land. Therefore, they can give them bigger spaces. Yeah. It's even smaller than what the apartheid government was giving. Mm -hmm. We are not fo focusing on those issues. We are not focusing on the fact that the RTP houses are not built in the suburbs. African people still are, are prohibited from staying in the suburbs. You can only now, because in the past you couldn't come there because of the law. Now you can't come there because of your purse. You have to have lots of money to stay in the suburbs. We're not focusing on that. We're focusing on whether this existed or not. The, the, this, what Trevor Manuel is actually doing is the ultimate denialism that he can, can, can be made. Because it's the same narrative that Helen Ziller has to say colonialism was very good. Nothing wrong with that. In actual fact, you guys are crazy. You don't understand what you're talking about. Somebody's going to come back sooner and tell us, you know, under apartheid you went to school. You know, the schools were run properly. You, hmm. you, you yeah. had the basic uh, uh, essentials, but yeah. it is just where we, especially when it comes to the implementation of radical economic transformation, if leaders themselves are conflicted or compromised, they sit on various boards uh, with board fees and uh, shares and yields, etc. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the priority would not be the, 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 the greater Marseille who are living on, on the breadline, if not below it. Mm -hmm. uh, Look, it's a reality, Cindy. I cannot, if I sit in a company that you own, I cannot stand up there and criticize that company. It's a reality. Yeah, whilst, I do, whilst I do agree with uh, Mr. Lukuleni that a, a lot of challenges still exist in society uh, because of former leaders and particularly white monopoly capital, uh, but I think the reality that also South Africans must accept is that a lot has been achieved in 23 years. And I don't think one can reverse 360 years of a, of a struggle, um, of a condemnation, of apartheid, of racialism, uh, and all of those things in just 23 years. So a lot has been achieved, but uh, uh, as well, a, a lot still has to be done. I think the challenge with the ANC at this point and, a tree, and achieving radical economic transformation is because the ANC is considered to be a broad church. And the discussion is that if it's a broad church, there's going to be capitalism in the ANC, there's going to be socialists in the ANC, there's going to be communists in the ANC because it's a broad church. Now, if all our thinking is not alike, mm -hmm. how are we going to transcend and come to the valued, that dotted line? How are we going to get the end result, which at this point is supposed to be radical economic transformation? Because I can tell you for the capitalists, uh, radical economic transformation is not the agenda. Perhaps for the socialists it can be. The communists uh, need to be driving this. So because the ANC is a broad church, uh, a collective thinking is not easy. 
and that's why you'll see these uh, these spats. And so as much as we say, you know, the factions in the ANC will, will run the party, I think this will also be a great year. The year, the year of Oliver Tambo will also be a great year because it is in this year that the ANC, even as a broad church, will disseminate and pick sides and then society may know which part of the ANC will be ready to deliver radical economic transformation. Because in a broad church, uh, when the pastor preaches, we all hear different things. Hmm. Depending on whether you're anointed or not. Uh, but, but so, uh, again, should we do a lifestyle audit? Should we, uh, you know, one guest was talking about appealing to uh, establish business, white monopoly capital, to assist in terms of social uh, economic programs in the townships. And, and not to use the, 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 the stick approach, as it were, by reforming policy and punishing uh, corporate SA for not doing their bit. Walter, what, what, is, what, are, what are the alternatives? Apartheid is an evil. You cannot re reform an evil. You have to dismantle all the pillars of apartheid. You can't reform it. And the reality is that you can't then ask people to assist to have a good heart. You can't appeal to their good heart. You have to put policies and requirements that they should do that. You have to do that. You know, if, if you ask yourself, in 23 years, the policy of affirmative action has not been able to deliver simply because we've been saying you should do this, you should do this, the, the penalties are not, are, are not uh, radical enough. You know, mm. for me, uh, the reality is that if you don't tell people what should happen and you appeal to their sense of guilt, it's not going to happen. You, ha you will have the, 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 what I call the, 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 the Paul syndrome, where they would come and watch you in the township, you know, drive around and watch you in the township and go back to the suburbs. You have to change that. There, there was no reason in 94 that the government that took over could not have said, as of today, we're not building houses in the townships. That is the policy the PAC is pushing. We're saying, if we get in, in power, we will immediately stop building government houses in the townships. And those guys who have the money, we'll give them land in the townships. They can mm. go and build it. Mm. We'll even give them for free. So that they, the reality of sitting in those areas comes to home to them. Because right now, there's nothing that they see. Nothing that they see. A small business person who happens to be white uh, will do something good, but the guys who are big conglomerates, they will not do that. Because you are not, you are not instructing them. You are not mm. saying to them, you can't make profits here unless you do one, two, three, four. Yeah, but as finance, former finance Trevor Manuel says that white monopoly capital is a ruse himself having been uh, the, the, the head of uh, the financial um, department. It, 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 it begs the question, under his tenure, whether there has been adequate spend where it's most required, i.e. in township and peri-urban areas. Uh, and what he, he used to refer to a Tembi, the proverbial Tembi, and how her life was transformed through, through him as a minister. What's his track record? Well, I think the track record of any, uh, you know, of any politician lies in that department. Uh, and one should look at Treasury of the tenor. But if you look at all the skeletons that are coming out of Treasury in, in this day and age, and I believe there will be more to come uh, in, in days ahead, uh, one can simply come to, to, to the understanding that there was a lot hidden. And uh, Mr. Mr. Manu does not have a clear a track record. And, and I remember, you know, in South Africa how uh, he was honored and revered as the best finance minister we've ever had. But he was the only finance minister we've ever, we've ever had in, in democracy. In, first, in fact, he was the first uh, finance minister we had in the Mandela administration. So who were we comparing him with? I think his track, track record must be assessed. And it must look to the Freedom Charter to, to say, were Africans given what the Freedom Charter said they would be given? Did Mr. Manuel you give the right budgets? Did you allocate the right budgets to meet the declarations of the Freedom Charter. But I hasten to say you'll find that those budgets were not given. A lot of the things that are said in politics, Amandla, let it come, 
uh, can just be a campaign slogan. And I hope that even moving forward, radical economic transformation will not just be a party slogan just to incite emotions from the masses and the voters. Radical economic transformation must not just be an agenda item. It must be something that we are working towards and something that we are actively doing, even fulfilling that uh, national development plan and uh, Vision 2030 right now. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. As Fiso Matlango is resident political analyst, uh, thank you indeed. And Walter Lukuleni is PAC Secretary for Publicity. Musiri Tsiane is the chair of the South African Liberty Foundation. And you at home, thanks for watching. We'll take a quick break and take a look at the latest weather updates just after this.